Good evening and welcome back to another Everyday Living with myself, Simone Kennedy Harding and the exuberant um, Dave Hodgson. <laughs> I'm still exuberant this time of night as well. It's great to be back, Simone. Another week. Another week. I know. Comes sorry, that, around quick. That was the first word that just came to my mind. Exuberant. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, not uh, debonair or delectable. Not really. It, it may not happen again. There could there probably be another word, but that is what what came to me tonight. And we're so glad that you could join us. Well, I feel um, encouraged anyway. Well, good. Well, that is the theme of our show tonight. Everyone is encouragement. So we would love for your interaction and your emails and texts, please, because Dave is desperate to read something out. Otherwise, he'll sit there and have nothing to do, and that wouldn't be right. It'd be a waste of his <laughs> and your time. So we want to give him something to do is to read out your wonderful emails. We want to hear about any encouraging stories that you may have had um, at any time, not just during the, the lockdown, but um, yeah, any stories you've got where you have where you felt that someone else encouraged you or you may have been used to encourage someone else and your testimonies and um, your responses to, to, to the show as it goes on. So Dave. Well, I'm just going to start off by giving you a little story because... Oh, why not? Um, this uh, last Sunday, um, I was getting ready to do the church. Uh, we meet in the afternoon at Encounter Church in Spain, half past four. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> come along okay. and I enjoy it. It'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so I was getting in the morning and I had quite a few people saying, oh, we can't be there today for this reason, that reason, all genuine reasons. Yeah. But I was sort of thinking, is anybody going to be there? Um, and there was, there was quite a few that turned up. But you messaged me right at that time oh. with an encouragement and it was all about just the, letting the Holy Spirit move and allowing God to do things. Yeah. And, and I think you gave a word about me uh, being like a stone. Um, I don't think do my weight loss or oh, what it yeah. no, no. <laughs> But it was about a stone going into the oh, yeah, lake yeah. and then the ripples coming out and so yeah. on. And, and so, uh, so really, that, I'm getting my head around the full word of it, and I believe that's mm -hmm. from the Lord. But it was just an encouragement at the right time, Simone. Oh. So... Um, Thank you, Thank Lord. you for that. Amen. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'd love to hear from you if you've got any encouragements. Uh, personally, we both need encouraging on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you've got anything that uh, you've been going through in, in your life and, you, you know, and a word of encouragement came in at just the right time, or maybe something that where you've actually felt, I'm going to go and encourage somebody. Yeah. Um, because quite often we kind of go into automatic mode and take things for granted, don't yeah. we? And, and I think it, when it comes to encouragement, it's, for me, it's starting to become my natural state. It never used to be, but the more I do it, the more yeah. people are responding to it. So yeah. uh, maybe you've got to make a decision to go and encourage somebody. We're going to be looking a lot more about that tonight as well. So, yeah. yeah so I, be encouraged. Uh, yeah, be encouraged to encourage. And it's so funny, I think, um, I think when we are intentional, mm. there's something about you know, being intentional and really kind of stepping out. And someone encouraged me last week. Um, it's actually a lady who used to, that I used to pastor in the UK. And she's been on such an amazing journey. Wow, she's been through so much. And she was on my mind the day before she called me. Yeah. And I don't speak to her very often. And, and then she called me the next day um, from when she was originally on my mind. And we were just talking and then she just started to encourage me and she just started, she prayed over yeah. me and it was just such a really beautiful time. And she, you know, she sent me some songs and stuff. And I just thought, Lord, what was so amazing about that is I remember the first day that she came to, to the church and she didn't know the Lord. So and I remember being, you know, there for her and mentoring her and just, you know, just being her pastor and just you know, just helping her. And I was just like, Lord, you're so awesome mm. that you've sent this. It was like having one of your kids then start to encourage yeah. you when they're adults. And it's like, wow, Lord, you're so amazing. Um, that who he chooses, when he chooses, you know, he's, he's just got so many ways to encourage us. So, yeah. Well, this show actually came out, I think of last week, all yeah. kind of linked in and, uh, We've got something planned for next week, which is going to be great as well. But really, a word of encouragement when it comes in, if we ever need it, it's now. Um, yeah. Because people just need that kind of encouragement to go and be bold and do something, have courage, yeah. step out. Uh, and 
I don't always get it right, but when yeah. somebody brings that word and says, you know, and it does come at the right time. Yeah. Uh, just when you need it. Uh, yeah. And somebody says, look, this is just what you need right now. Yeah. And the Bible says, spur one another on to good work. That's so right. I think we need to, to really kind of be championing each yeah. other, you know, and saying, you know, yeah, you can do it. You know, it's going to be fine. Absolutely. God's going to use you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, so your encouragement to me came that, that Sunday. You were right. a great encouragement. You, that's, I think that's a real gifting that you have. Uh, as, as encouraging people and uh, yeah. really that's why we're doing this show isn't it yeah. because you know we, we, the reason why we do this show is because we want to reach out to people exactly. and encourage people that's to live right. for God Amen. Uh, and find him so um, yeah it's great uh, so be encouraged yes I'm, and, fi uh, I'm, I'm fired up but I think this is the thing you know we've talked before in our, um, when we were doing the late show you know in the sort of um, Lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> you know we we talked about being the body yeah. and stuff, and this is this is where you know this is really important that all of us have got a really important part to play. You've got an important part to play, and we start to really see how significant we are. And yeah. sometimes you know we downplay stuff, but you know even that even last Sunday, um, I mean you didn't tell me how you felt or anything. I think. You yeah. messaged about the show. Yeah. You just sent one thing, and then I actually, yeah, we didn't even speak. It was actually a voice yeah, note. Yeah, a and voice as I was leaving the message to you, I yeah. just got, I just got this word. And it's funny you should say that then about me because that encourages me because that's one of the first words I ever got like twenty five years ago. Yeah. Is that God is going to use me to be an encourager of His people? Yeah. And that's yeah, that's the first sort of prophetic words of knowledge but and and that's come to pass and that is the joy of my heart is to encourage you know intentionally encourage but there are times when you know god will just use us in that moment mm. he knew what you were thinking at that time and and i didn't know but those words came and they and they fitted you know um don't you think that maybe we this show should be prophetic encouragement as well because Ooh, yeah, that added dimension good. to it. Yeah. You know, I'm just sorry, I'm just getting Ooh, this. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean yeah. every now and then I get Come on. So the, I think when when the prophecy comes along with encouragement yeah. and it's part of it, it adds weight to it because you think, oh man, God's God's in this. Yeah. I remember when I was uh, at the Derby Church, I wasn't a pastor, I was just uh, I was on in the choir uh, on the stage. And I felt the Lord say, There's a woman here. And uh, she's got she's got a bad back, right? Uh, and I want you to go up and say mm -hmm. on the mic yeah. that, and and pray for her. I'm like, Lord, I can't do this. I can't. And I bottled it. Oh and no! And the next week, I felt the same words. So I went up to the front and said, "There's a woman here who's got a bad back, and God wants to heal you, right?" Yeah. Okay. So sorry. I was like, "So you sneezing?" <laughs> she sneaked it in there. Yeah. And so. Uh, uh, and so I did it the following week, and I thought, this must be God, because mm. I've, one, I've remembered it, and I've got a useless memory. So uh, I went and shared it again, and this woman came forward, and she said, yeah, the, is, yes, I've got a bad back, but I just want to tell you, the word was slightly wrong, because you said that I got it this weekend, and it was last weekend when Ooh. I got it. And I, said, and I said, yeah, I know it was, because God gave me the word then. See? So when the prophetic word comes like yeah. that, that really offers kind of encouragement to people. Yeah. And uh, so it just adds that kind of, you know, it's just debt. God's in this, yeah. Yeah, and so. I think it encourages, it encourages you being used by God. Like, okay, I heard from God, and that that encourages, yeah, yeah, our relationship with God. That okay, Lord, I heard you. You were speaking to me because it was it was right and it fitted. So it's like, no, I am hearing. And I think sometimes we, you know, we question that. So everyone gets encouraged. And I was just going to say, obviously, we're talking about you know encouraging one another and and other people encouraging us. But I know. Many times in my life, even this particular season in my life, it's like this is how this show came about as well. Just thinking, OK, needing to encourage myself in the Lord. Sometimes we we don't always have someone there to encourage us. So how do we encourage ourselves yeah. in the Lord? And I, and I think during these times as well, more than ever, that's really I don't know about how you feel about that. So let us know. Yeah. But more than ever we really need to remember what God has done and how do I encourage myself if mm. I can't get hold of someone on the phone, if no one's responding, how do I do that? And we're going to go and we're going to hear from you know, a beautiful sister in the Lord um, and she's going to tell us about how we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. So let's take a look. 
But what if you don't have that level of support? Or what if you do, but that support is not always available when you need it? In cases like this, you have to know how to encourage yourself, okay? How do we do that? I'm glad you asked. That's where today's scripture, Psalm 42, verse 5 comes in. It reads, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. It's safe to say that the writer of this psalm knows what it's like to be discouraged. But what I find inspiring about this verse is the psalmist acknowledges their feelings and then proceeds to encourage themselves in the Lord anyways. From this verse, we learn three things to do to encourage ourselves when we're feeling down or discouraged. Number one, put your hope in God. Sometimes we are discouraged because we have misplaced hope. We have made something other than God the way in which we receive fulfillment and satisfaction. We look to a relationship, the opinion of others, our salary or career to do for us only what God can do. This will always lead to discouragement. Temporarily, it will meet our needs, but not forever. Only God can eternally quench the thirst of our souls. Like the woman at the well, we must search the things of this world over and over again if we put our hope in them. How exhausting. But when we place our hope in Jesus, the living water, the look is over, our thirst is fulfilled, and we are truly satisfy. Number two, praise God. After the psalmist encourages himself to place his hope in God, he then resolves to praise God anyways. For I will yet praise him, the psalmist says. It's the decision not to allow our emotions to control us. I may feel sad, but I do not have to allow that to dictate my actions. I may not feel like it, but I can still get up, raise my hands and let God know just how good he is. Because at the end of the day, my feelings do not determine if God is worthy of my praise or not. The benefit of worshiping God is that it helps us to take our focus off ourselves and our feelings and place our faith in God. Instead of feeling so sad about how bad things are, we can focus on how good God is. We can be honest about our weaknesses and then rejoice in God's strength. How blessed am I to say, yes, I'm weak, but praise God for he is gracious. Yes, I messed up, but praise God, he is faithful. Yes, I'm empty, but praise God, he is everything. Number three, remember the value of the relationship you have with Christ. Last, the psalmist says, my savior, my God. When we praise God, we recognize and magnify how good he is. But the psalmist takes it a step further and personalizes this great God. He's not just any God. He's my God. I love that God promises not only that we are his, but that even more, he is ours. He is our God. So everything that we praise him for is available to us. How encouraging. When we are discouraged, we can always praise God for the beautiful connection that we have with the God of the universe, the God who hangs the stars and made the universe and knows your name. He loves you and has offered himself to you through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I love that because yeah. um, I really like things that break things down practically and just give us an idea of, OK, you know, what can we do and when we're going through this yeah. stuff, you know, and I, I think what she said is really useful. Let us know what what touched you on, on hearing that. For me, I think when she said, yes, praise God, but also we've got to be real. And I think sometimes it can be more discouraging when someone says to us, just praise God without acknowledging yeah. how we feel <clears throat> or the truth of yeah. what we're going through, because then we kind of suppress it and we don't really deal with it. But actually saying, no, I do feel this way, but God, no, I, I, this is happening, but God, because yeah. then it gives us a clear perspective, you know? I think sometimes in the middle of things that we're going through in our lives, it doesn't feel like God's there. Yeah. And so last thing people need is yeah. a cliche. Yeah. or some sort of trite yeah. thing. <laughs> I, I, my, one of my closest friends died uh, two years ago and had a, a, st a stroke and in his late 30s. Became, he was a Christian guy, a lovely guy called, called Martin McBride. And I remember going up to his uh, widow who's in her early 30s. Mm. She's been married a few months. And I said, um, it's, I, I'll use us slightly different word, but I, I'll use this word tonight. It's naff, isn't it, at the moment? Mm. And she's like, S thank you for saying that, because mm. I've had so many people come up and say, don't worry, God's with you, it's all going to be fine. 
And you know what? Sometimes we just need to acknowledge that, you know what? Life isn't always great, you know? And yeah. life isn't always fine. And the best way I think Jesus encouraged people was actually saying, you know, I, uh, who was it Jesus said it? I'll come in the scripture. It says, we grieve with those who are grieving. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, you're going to say it. Yeah. But, uh, and we rejoice with those who are rejoicing. That's and right. sometimes, you know, we, we want to rejoice with those who are grieving. And yeah. they don't respond that well to that sort of thing. So just, you know, being sensitive and recognising, I think Jesus had a way of, of um, relating to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, he was tempted in every way that we are. So he could come alongside you and say, That's Simone, I know how you're feeling at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not a great, but yeah. I'm with you in it. Yeah. And that's that to me is more encouraging than saying, oh, it's all going to be all right. Yeah. You know? yeah because yeah. I think sometimes I think we all mean well. And I think we've been in those situations where yeah. you want to encourage someone by saying something good. But actually, you know, acknowledging that there is the reality, something yeah. that you do need encouraging for is the starting point. Yeah. You know, is to say, you know, you lost your job. You know, I'm really sorry you lost your job. You know, it must be really difficult and whatever. Mm. But if you need anything, I'm with you. You know, you're acknowledging. Yeah. But when we don't acknowledge, it kind of feels like what we're going through is not important. Yeah. And we don't often realise that. So, um, yeah, being and being able to come alongside someone. And like you said, that's what Jesus is the master of. Yeah. That he has a way of, you know, coming down and lifting us up. Mm. You know, like the woman that was caught in adultery, you know, he, he actually came down, he bent down. And it's like bent down to a level but brought her up yeah and that is what encouragement does isn't it it's it comes down to undergird us and just lift us up take us up you know higher and have we got any emails by the not way? yet no we've we've not got any emails yet so if you're the first one by the way i'll just say this let me just lean down sorry be all uh this is a bit this is not true but i'll sort of do it anyway if the first emailer will get a derby county mask okay <laughs> so um that that may not be in the incentive that, not, that people need. Right. You okay, see, but... uh, just to let you know, if you don't think that this is biblical, the Bible says, and the law provided a ram. So right. there you are. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, this has cleared everything up for all of us. <laughs> Actually, I'm... nobody's going to email that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Won't, that's only a joke. You're not going to get a Derby County mask, don't yeah. worry. Thank you. So <laughs> let the floodgates for the emails open. <laughs> so you know what? Continuing on in, in encouraging ourself in the Lord because I like I said before I do think we need to know how to be able to do that I think you know as we're, as we're walking with God that's part of our maturity as well of being yeah. able to yeah to to strengthen ourselves, not to you know be self-righteous or say I can do it all and I don't need anybody else no we do need one another but um I think sometimes when we're just relying on people completely and we don't know how to feed ourselves or encourage ourselves. We can get ourselves in problems. Yeah. And so, leading on from from what you know, that other sister was saying, we've got Beth Moore here, who's actually just talking a bit about David and um, what happened with with David, King David. So let's take a look at this clip. Verse 6 of 1 Samuel 30, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Strengthened himself. I love the King James rendering. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I hope you always have someone to encourage you. I'd want to. I'd want to. Many of you are sitting next to somebody that you have mutual encouragement with, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. But what if nobody is there? What if nobody is there? Do you have a relationship with the living Lord Jesus Christ through his word to where you know what is true about the way he feels about you? Do you know it? Do you know it? Because listen, sometimes there is no one there. Sometimes nobody's going to come along and encourage you in the Lord. Sometimes there's not going to be somebody there to go, you're really a wonderful person of great value. You are highly esteemed. All of these things that would be true, but nobody's there to say it. Could you know it is true based on the authority of the scriptures? That's what I'm asking you. Building yourselves up in the most holy faith knowing that what he says is true, being able to rehearse it in our own ears, saying it with our mouth, believing it with our heart. I know my Redeemer lives. I know 
my Redeemer loves me, has given his life for me, been raised from the dead in my behalf and left a tomb empty for me. I know my God loves me. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> She's not playing around, yeah. is she? No. Um, yeah, I think it's funny because when you just start to hear those words, you just, you just, you can just feel like yourself being fed and just watered, you know, yeah. like a plant that seems to. And sometimes we feel that way, you know, that when you when you see a, a, a plant and it looks a bit wilted, and you're like, and some people can say, oh well, no, that that should just be, I'll oh, forget it. Yeah. But it just takes a bit of tender loving care and just, you know just to be watered, just to be fed, and then it comes right back up. And that is what happens in our life at times when we just feel like we're just drooped over and we're just like, you know, and people can look at our situations and we can look at ourselves and think, really, what's going to happen now? But just getting that word, that the words yeah. of, of, you know, of God in us, and sometimes you don't realise what is happening at the time. It's like food, you know, when you're not feeling very well, just it, it's better to eat something than yeah. to eat nothing and you're slowly getting strength yeah. slowly getting strength and then before you know it there's a shift and you start you, you start to feel that strength and there's a change and that's what happens you know with the word of god as it encourages us and we we start to take that in and that's obviously what david realized that you know what he's on his own you know what's he going to do and he starts to remember the goodness of god he starts to remember what god has done oh, and yeah. then it's like oh yeah, Lord. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't leave me there. Yeah. You did rescue me. You did do this, and you start to encourage yourself. You know, which when, is when like... you look back on stuff in your life and you think, yeah. um, at the moment, I, I was talking about this. I did an online Bible study today for the church, and yeah. it was talking about waiting patiently for the Lord. Three things, and one of them was waiting expectantly, yeah. and the other one was good. waiting patiently, and the third one was standing firm while you're waiting. Right. And so, the Bible says, "Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew oh, their strength." True. So. Uh, and those, and actually, the word "wait" and "hope" is used in two different translations there. Oh, so um, the girl earlier, I've got a name, mentioned hope, and it really is important that uh, whilst we're waiting on the Lord, that we we encourage ourselves. Uh, and there are times that I feel down, mm. and I will either listen to music or put a preacher on in the car, and I'm suddenly That's it right. wakes my spirit yeah. up again, yeah. and my spirit connects with God's word, and I'm suddenly receiving. So. I, I wrote this this morning. I wasn't planning on saying it tonight, but I really felt I put this on because sometimes for me, encouraging myself, I need to write stuff down. Yeah. So I put this on Facebook this morning. And what was a real encouragement is that a non-Christian said on the comments, oh. um, you're nearly converting me. I thought, well, that's something's going oh. right. Yeah. So this is how I feel. He knows our frame, the psalmist wrote. I don't know if you're like me, but every now and then, I get a flutter in my tummy, nerves, an fear, anxiety. First thing in the morning, and I had it this morning. When I think about all he has, uh, all I have to do, pastor a church, radio presenting, TV show, uh, meeting people with issues, dealing with great responsibilities, and the greatest responsibility being a husband and a dad. Mm. The thought sometimes of having two little human beings dependent on me oh. and learning from me and wondering if I'm not messing this dad thing up completely. Mm. Then my faith kicks in. Mm. I quite honestly don't know what I would do without the ability to pray and offload my stuff onto God. Mm. I haven't always believed in him, but today, this Thursday morning, I'm sure glad I do. He is my rock, my coach, and my mentor, mm. and he champions me to not just carry on, but to be the best version of me there is. I frequently fall short of his standards, but I know his arms aren't out wide uh, to hit me, but rather to embrace me. When others give up, he's still there. When others are faithless, he remains faithful. Mm. A little over 28 years ago, I got to know him for the first time. I still, I'm still finding out more. I know I will let him down this week. I know I won't meet everybody's expectations this week. I know I will doubt this week. I may drop a bad word or two. I may feel fearful and anxious again this week but good dads are not perfect dads this week guaranteed melissa and george that's my children will fall short of what is required of them and i will and i'll love them nonetheless because of it there's nothing you can do to make god love you more and there's nothing you can do to make god love you less 
I'm reminding myself that God knows me more than I know myself. He's the great shepherd and he's calling us, calling out to us again today. Perfection is the goal, but I'm not there yet. Maybe as I carry on learning, I will get a little closer. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, and I, I wrote that this morning because I just wanted to put my thoughts oh, down, yeah. you know, but mm. in doing that, it encouraged me. And then I got a whole load of, literally a whole load of other people saying, oh, that was just for me this morning. And, and one, as I say, one non-Christian said uh, something along the lines of, um, you'll convert me at this rate. And I said, well, if you need any guidance, let me know. Yeah, yeah. And so just that to me is one, it was encouraging myself, yeah. but I also wanted to encourage other people as well. So I know that, I uh, hope that encouraged you tonight as well, um, hearing that. But yeah, we, what you said earlier is actually, you know what, let's just be real. We exactly. said this for the last few weeks. Let's yeah. just be real and acknowledge that we need God. We exactly. need a shepherd. And that's yeah. the thing about being transparent is encouraging. And, you know, let's look to see. We're going to um, go now to someone that, that most of us know really well in terms of um, being an encourager and, and, and her being transparent with her story which encourages so many people and has encouraged me. So we're going to hear from Joyce Mayer now on encouragement. Well, I believe that there's tremendous power in encouragement, and I think sometimes we need to just take a special time to encourage one another. So I wanted to take this time to encourage you because you are a special person, you're important to the kingdom of God, and you're important to us at Joyce Meyer Ministries. I realize that there are many, many, many people today that are in very difficult situations in the world. Your situation might be financial. Maybe you've lost your job and you need a job. Maybe you've lost some of your savings, some of your retirement. Maybe it's a health issue, an issue with your children, another relationship problem. It could be a lot of different things. But the good news is, is God knows it. He knew it before you ever entered into your difficulty and he has your release and your deliverance in mind. God does have a plan. And even though we're very often surprised by the things that happen to us, God is never surprised. He sees you, he knows you, he cares about you, and you will come through this. I just wanna encourage you not to ever give up. God loves you so much, and he's bigger than our problems. You know, you are a real important part of Joyce Meyer Ministries. You encourage us. When we hear from you, it encourages us. And I want you to know that we are praying for you on a regular basis. And I believe that you do feel the effects of our prayers in your life. And now I would like to pray a special prayer for you, but I want you to be in agreement with me. I want us to release our faith together. And we're gonna pray a special blessing prayer over you as a friend and a partner with this ministry. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for our friends and partners anyone who's viewing this little segment right now. And first of all, God, I ask you to strengthen them. Strengthen them with the strength that only you can give. Fill them full of a holy determination that they will never give up. Help them focus on what they need to focus on. Help them not to turn inward on themselves, but to keep their eyes on you. Help them not to withdraw but to continue in fellowship with other believers and to continue pressing into their relationship with you. Father, I pray that if there's any today that are depressed or downtrodden or, or, or even have gotten into a state of self-pity, that they would shake that negative emotion off and they would continue to press in with you and that they would experience your joy today. I bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask you to open doors for them that no man can open. I ask you to straighten out any crooked path in front of them and give them favor everywhere they go. We thank you, God, for meeting every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. You know, one of the things that really struck me when, when just listening to that was when she was talking about as well fellowshipping. Yeah. And so obviously, you know, we're looking at encouraging ourselves, but then, you know, it's the... It's the two sides of the one coin, isn't yeah. it? We need to be able to be, be able to encourage ourselves at those times and know how to do, do that and develop that. But also the other side of that is we need to fellowship. Yeah. And when we, you know, bring ourselves in fellowship, there's a place of safety. So you mentioned, 
you know, beautifully when you're just expressing your heart, which is encouraging with that transparency and brought in the scripture um, about the Lord being our shepherd. Yeah. You know, they're amongst other sheep and there's something about being with other sheep as well that encourages you. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, so that, that element of fellowship and what she's what she just mentioned there, that kind of struck me that, that when we do that, we'll hear a word yeah. where, you know, so many times I've thought like, okay, yeah, I might not go to church today or, or whatever it might be to be amongst other believers. And when you get together, you just hear something just being in the midst, you know, yeah. and I, that's what David says so many times. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, yeah. you know, um, and just having that, you know, that fellowship and that encouragement, there's something that just, you know, just lifts us. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like uh, today, uh, I met with a friend of mine who goes to another church on the coast here, Fonz. Oh, and, Fonz. Uh, hey. Yay. <laughs> not that, not that Fonz. <laughs> Happy days. All right. Uh, uh, and uh, I used to love that program. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, and I had a word for him. Right. Which was absolutely spot on. Wow. Uh, and it, I won't go into the word because it was personal to him. Sure. But he also had a word for me and challenged me. It oh, wasn't a prophetic word, but the word sure. that he said yes. challenged me and to make me to do something and step out of the boat and do sure. something I haven't done before. So yeah. that to, iron sharpens iron that's thing right. is absolutely right. And that's why I think um, at some point we may do a program on the importance of church fellowship, oh, being yeah. in a church, because... Yeah. Uh, you get that when you meet up physically. I mean, you can have that over the internet. You can yeah. have it, you know, messaging and WhatsApp mm -hmm. and so on. We do that WhatsApp yeah. message stuff. Um, but sometimes you really get the gist of it or, or the context of it when you're sitting down with a person. And so there is a real need for us. I know with all that's going on at the moment, yeah. uh, with the restrictions, but yeah. there is a real need for us to be together. Well, I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, it's not the program tonight, but... God has designed us to be communicative and to be together. Yeah. You know, that is the way we're designed to be. So when we are in one another's presence, there's there's something that happens, you know, with that because we're designed for that to happen. So, um, and even when you were just saying that, it says that when we come together, that one bring a psalm, one bring a, a word, mm. one bring an encouragement, um, a testimony. So there should be something that we're, that we're constantly bringing that when people meet us, whether they're, you know, um, Christians or non-Christians, that we're bringing something yeah. to the table that someone is, is left with, um, you know, they're taking away something yeah. we're, we're feeding, offering a f food or drink, you know, in, in, in terms of encouragement yeah. that people come away and say, wow, that encouraged me. Like what you said, that spurred me on that just gave me that, whatever yeah, you know it's a two-way thing because yeah i don't know i'm of the age now and maybe your parents were the same but yeah. whenever you used to have christmas dinner or something right. my mum would go right have you got enough of this have you got enough of that have you got yeah. enough of this and i'm like mum just sit down and eat your own yeah. and she'd never eat anything yeah she's like she's talk, talking to everybody else like, have you got enough potatoes have you got enough yeah. yes mum sit down and eat your own food yeah. you yeah. know and she, and quite often we can be so concerned about others yeah. and this is not going against what i said earlier no that we're not eating ourselves. So it's a two-way thing that when we sit at the, t when we sit at the table, Ooh. encouragement, get this. Come on. We're, we're to give out food, but we're also yeah. to take it in. That's uh, right. Because we can't give out what we haven't got. And actually, exactly. next week, we're going to be looking at that, that, about resting and yeah. being able to give from what we've got already. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, just make sure you get in. I mean, I'm, I will never go without food, right? <laughs> It's never been an issue to me. You know, I'm not like my mum. I'm like, mum, you sort all the food. I'll eat it yeah. all. But um, I think yeah, it's a woman's just, thing as well. Women yeah. tend to, we tend to fall into that. Not every woman, yeah. but tend to be, you know, making sure that everything's yeah. Are you right? okay. Are you, right? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like, we have to kind of be told that yeah. it's okay to look after yourself, that that is part of being, you know, yeah. healthy. And that's exactly, also yeah. a good example that also encourages others especially you know daughters watching yeah. their mums this is how we learn these yeah, things yeah. so actually when you see your 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 mum take time to look after herself and make time for herself that is actually teaching yeah, you really as a woman yeah. but she, um, would, she would go around have you got enough, have you got enough? yeah well, i don't like that in restaurants are you know when 
you, you know, once is fine when people say, how's your food, is it okay? And you always say, yes, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> Even if you don't like it, because you know, we're British, we're not going to moan about it. We'll just, uh, so, um, They're and not going to tell them to their face, and then they you'll come moan the after. Time. They come and second, is your food okay? Yeah, my food's yeah. fine, <laughs> leave me alone, let me eat my food in peace. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry about oh, that. But, Get it yeah, off your so, chest. but yeah, just to say, uh, like you were saying, though, mm. I think we need to model that to people yeah. that actually, you know, what we need to be encouraged and to be an encourager. Okay. That's right. Amen. I'm gonna write that oh, down. so we've got some emails. Yes. Yeah. Now, um, I'm not going to give the name on this on this first one, uh, dear folks. Please don't use my name tonight. I won't. I'll write to say that at this moment in time, I would just like to have someone visit me. As far as I'm concerned, things have not yet improved. I'm feeling pretty desperate in the Lord. Uh, I'm feeling pretty desperate in the Lord. And, and uh, the name is given, but obviously not going to mention the name here. But just to say, we will be praying and we'll mention your name in prayer later, but obviously not on the TV show. But yeah. uh, thank you. And we just, you know, it's, it is trite. It sometimes feels trite to say, oh, God is with you. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, He is with you. Even when we don't feel like it, he is with you. And I just want to say tonight to that particular viewer that don't, we said this last week, don't go on your feelings, go on the truth. And when we feel like God isn't there, that does not change the fact and the truth that when he says he is, he is. And so uh, just know that tonight that he is with you and you can speak to him in fellowship with him. Again, God designed us to be in fellowship with other people as well yeah. so uh, if that can be possible then that will really help you get a really good friend around you or some friends that will help you mm -hmm. but ultimately know this god is with you he yeah. is there with you right now in your room where you are so yeah. thanks for your email yeah. uh right so this one i hopefully can mention karen hardy good evening thank you for uh thank you for both being there tonight i'm standing on god's word tonight uh, please stand with me Pray for me, and I'll pray also for you. Bless you, Karen. Thank you. We'll mention that at the end as well. Uh, hello, Dave and Simone. Great to see you both this evening. Really good program. Well, uh, the check's in the post. Um, <laughs> my daughter is always very encouraging. I also find Joyce Meyer very encouraging, and I love the Revelation channel, as you are all a real encouragement to me, especially since the lockdown started. I've been watching Revelation channel for over 10 years. It's okay, Dave. I'm just... After a Derby County match, really. <laughs> <laughs> You're the winner. <laughs> oh, dear. Especially as I'm originally from Nottingham. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a bit that's a bit contentious, that is, because we don't get on. Oh, really? Derby, Nottingham. No, we had the same manager, but we don't. Oh. Nottingham, Forest and Derby, you see. But I've got a feeling that you're, you're going to break that tonight. Because you know what? You're going to, yeah. What? What, God, what man has separated, that's... <laughs> God will bring together. There you go. And so... I feel that God is bringing Derby and Nottingham together through us tonight, Susan, OK? There you go. Oh. So she won't want the mask, but anyway. Uh, but what a wonderful reconciliation live on television. Yeah. You've, you've witnessed it, you've, you're experiencing this, guys. And you know what? You've just said um, it's actually my nan's 85th birthday yeah. today. And as we were coming to the studio tonight, we were on a family Zoom call with her and she was telling us some bits about her life story. We were saying words to her. And I have to say that my nan is an amazing encourager yeah. of God. I mean, you call her up and she's going to start to tell you her testimonies. <laughs> and But, you know, she is just such a natural encourager. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, how awesome is that? That I've got a woman in my life yeah, absolutely. that that I can get on the phone yeah. to and we can encourage each other in the Lord. You know, um, it's just so amazing. Um, and she was just talking about her testimonies of the things that God has healed her of. And I think the more that we actually tell, the more that does encourage us and that encourages other people. It's just like, yeah. it's like a momentum, you know, it starts and then it continues and Pay it continues. Forward, yeah. yeah. And it just, that wheel keeps turning. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you guys tonight as well is that, you know, to really think, let's think on the things that, that God has already done. And obviously God is preparing things for us, but sometimes we do need to go back and we do need to look over the, the you know, the catalogue of goodness, you know, mm. um, to just refer back to, oh yeah, the Lord did that and he did that. And then by the end of it, you're like, oh wow, 
you've already you know we've already just just boosted ourselves with the things that god has done yeah. um over the years or over the time that you've known him so i just want to encourage you with that tonight you know look back and see what god has done and um yeah let that be fuel um f for you right now and yeah. just and just to feed you yeah absolutely yeah uh, i don't think we truly understand how a word of encouragement which could almost feel quite flippant to us yeah. really affects somebody and i remember not this year because I, I every year I go to a conference in harrogate and i love harrogate uh, but this year obviously not wasn't happening so we go over the elam churches and i remember walking uh, 2019 walking into this conference center and this other pastor come up to me young pastor yeah. i feel like an old pastor now <laughs> and he comes and says <laughs> And I didn't recognise him. He said, hi, Dave. I said, hi, how are you? You know when somebody knows you, but you don't know them. And he's yeah, like, where yeah. do I know you from? Yeah, yeah. And anyway, he starts speaking. And I'm like, hi, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, where do I know him from? <laughs> and then he says, um, you don't, you probably won't remember this, but you came up to me. You, I came to the Coventry Church one day and you, you came up and gave me a word of encouragement about going into the ministry. And it stuck with me for, I'm like, I can't remember. Yeah. I could not. I could not remember yeah. giving it. Yeah. And so I think we don't really, we just do not realize the Bible says there's yeah. power in there's life and death yeah. in, the, in the tongue. And we, I ju just don't think we fully grasp yeah. how powerful our words are yeah. when we speak God's word into people's lives. Yeah. And let's just be aware that when we speak encouragement, yeah. that could just take that person to places that you'd never dream of because of that word. Exactly. So. Well, you know what? That really leads us perfectly on You know what? It's like we rehearsed this, isn't it? You <laughs> would have thought we'd rehearsed this. We really haven't. We, we just, we're well, just we going with the we're just going hours with the yeah. rehearsing <laughs> yeah, yeah. this show. Uh, we don't. But what you just said there actually has just, just, just taken us nicely into this next clip that... Um, that I've got and it really inspired me um, and I think sometimes you know it's really good to see visual things and and stuff and when you were just saying that Dave I just thought that the word of God is like and it can be an electric shock mm. into our system that just wakes us up and just gives us that life and so we're going to look at this clip from this movie it's called um, Bruce Almighty um, which sounds really strange to say that but just bear with me um, because it's actually reflecting on how almighty and encouraging God really is. So enjoy. I want you to decide what's right for me. I surrender to your will. can't kneel down in the middle of a highway and live to talk about it, son. But why? Why now? Bruce, you have the divine spark. You have the gift for bringing joy and laughter to the world. I know. I created you. Quit bragging. To <laughs> see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's the spark. What do you want me to do? I want you to pray, son. Go ahead. Use them. Um, Lord, feed the hungry and bring peace to all of mankind. How's that? If you want to be Miss America. <laughs> now, come on. What do you really care about? Grace. Grace. You want her back? No. I want her to be happy. 
No matter what that means, I want her to find someone who will treat her with all the love she deserved from me. I want her to meet someone. We'll see her always, as I do now. Through your eyes. Now that's a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I'm gonna get right on it. Well, I want to see what happens next now. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that film years ago yeah. when it first came out, Bruce Almighty. Yeah. yeah. And it's, well, again, it was just when you were just talking, and I just realised that that was going to come up in the clip, that actually what really stood out for me is the transparency that, like, first of all, you know, the situation's happened in this particular scene, and then, you know, he starts off saying this this prayer that sounds trite, like yeah. you use that word, like what we should say, let there be world peace. And it's not really, which is true and is good, but God is concerned about that, but also our personal situations and yeah. really what is in our heart and just bringing it down to that level of intimacy and transparency, like, no, okay, let's try again. What is really on your heart? And then he starts to say it and then that starts to get poured out and then, you know, God then can move in the situation. Yeah. And I think that this is what happens with us sometimes when we're, when we're discouraged, when we say the truth of that, when we can just be honest with that, because I think that's what holds us back as Christians that we're like, we don't, we don't want to be discouraged. We should always be encouraged. <laughs> but, but when we say the truth yeah. of that, then God will send encouragement. When we can say, oh, I'm feeling a bit down right now, Oh, Lord, then God sends yeah. the encouragement. But if we deny that, it's like we deny his power to to lift us yeah. up and, and to be the strength that we need. You know, so when I just when I just saw that clip, I just thought that was an encouragement, encouraging moment with with how it is with the Lord. You know, I don't yeah, know what you got from that. Absolutely. I think uh, it, you read what you sow. And so that's what I was taking from that, that, you know, if you want encouragement, than be an encourager. Yeah. Uh, and if you want people to encourage you, then you go and encourage people. And so I would say today, if you're saying I'm in a place where I'm not getting encouragement, mm. my question would be, who? when was the last time you encouraged somebody? Yeah. And you may find that that comes around. We've got a, an email here. Oh, lovely. Yes. Um, yes. And this is from uh, Alison Linda. Come on hey. down. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, lovely people. You are both so lovely. Oh. Uh, and such a blessing to me. I need encouragement right now. I have some lovely friends, but unbelieving and hostile or obvious uh, or oblivious to the Lord. I have three lovely children that have drifted away from the Lord. I've tried to administer to one of my friends. I've, I've tried to minister to one of my friends who knows she has made many mistakes like me, but does not believe the Bible and believes that when she dies, she dies. And that's kind of it. Yeah. I totally failed in trying to bring her to know Jesus. Oh. Let me just say that, I'm going to carry on in a minute. Let me just say that I've, I've had that sentiment myself and I've, and I've heard others say it as well. It's not your responsibility to bring her to Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says that we're to, um, we're to give an account, we're to, uh, we're to give a reason for the faith that we have mm -hmm. and the hope yeah. that we have. And I would pray that God brings other people into it's not the weight of it, it's not all on your shoulders. Yeah. It's not if you fail, then that person's right. become a Christian. Yeah. It, then you say, Look, I've, I've done my bit, and you may just be part of it. The Bible says that one sows, another waters, That's and right. the other reaps the harvest. Yeah. So, but God gives yeah, the increase. God brings the increase. So, right. it's, it's really it's the Holy Spirit that does yeah. it. So, I would say, don't put so, too much pressure on yourself. You, 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 and again, you've said that, you know, I failed in bringing her to know Jesus. Well, actually, we don't know that because if that person comes to Christ, they'll certainly remember uh, the times that you've shared with them That's in the right. past. So um, just take the weight off that because actually it's not down to you. Salvation is down to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So uh, 
feeling pretty useless and letting Joshua down big time. I have no one here that believes you are my family. God bless you both and all at Revelation TV. Love Ali in Jersey and oh. a beautiful part of the world as well. Never been there, but uh, do keep in touch. Uh, it's great. You know what, what I love about Rev TV and what I love about doing this show is it, we do feel like family, don't we? Oh, yeah. And so uh, if we've encouraged you tonight, then that's that's been that that will give me a good night's sleep knowing yeah, that. Yeah, I just yeah. I just wanted to just really add to that and just encourage you because I think all of us have felt that way is because we you know we really want people to know G the Jesus that we know and we want to see it happen right away. And I've been yeah. in situations where there there's words that I've spoken to someone that they don't know the Lord, they're my neighbour or whatever. I haven't met them for like 15 years, bumped into them. Oh, by the way, I'm now a Christian. And I remember when you said these words and I can't remember any of the words <laughs> that I said. Um, so I think we're called to be seed sowers. We're called to be salt shakers. We're called to be light bearers. And there are times when we will see the reaping of, of the words that we've spoken. But, um, but a lot of the time, you know, it's just knowing that we're sowing a seed. And I really get that sense, like when what, what Dave said, is to take the pressure of yourself and start to look at, and realize that we're partnering with the Lord and um, yeah. just your life is, is a light. And sometimes we can be, you know, we don't realize that the simple things that we do, you know, just continuing to, to, to walk in our faith mm. is actually, you know, a, a light to someone else because they would have given up, but they see us going on, you know, and sometimes we think it's, we've got to say three scriptures and, and, give someone a Bible. If you can do that, that's great. But partnering with the Holy Spirit and saying, Lord, how can you use me? And, you know, we're just going to just finish with this song because it talks about encouraging ourselves in the Lord. So be blessed. Have a great week. We'll see you again soon yeah. on the next installment. Have a great weekend, guys. Yeah. See you soon. Be encouraged. Sometimes you have to win. Yourself Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test And no matter how you feel Speak the word and you will be healed Speak over yourself Courage yourself Show.